Well, today we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. Paul says this, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul says, For this reason, going back to verse 14, because you're God's possession, because you're loved by God, because you're valued by God, because you're forgiven by God, because He's your loving Father. He says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Ever since I heard about your faith in the fact that He died for all your sins and that you're forgiven. I heard about your faith in the resurrection. I heard about your, your faith in, in knowing that He's coming back. He said, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints. See, Paul's using this word saints again. Paul never refers to Christians as sinners saved by grace. He constantly and consistently reminds believers who they are. They're saints. A saint is someone who's been purified by the blood of Christ and somebody who's been set aside for the, for the purpose of God to, to reveal His grace in and through them, to be light and, uh, to a world that, that's in darkness, to be love to a world that's dead, to be life to a world that's dead. Saints. So Paul's writing to the saints and he says, For this reason, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Paul constantly had a love for the, for the people in Ephesus. He constantly remembered them in his prayers. And here's what Paul prays for the people in Ephesus. It's his prayers for us today. It's my prayers for you. He says this. He prays this. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father. See what Paul, the, the, the term Paul uses, uses for God is the glorious Father. Paul loves the word glory, the word glorious. Remember the word glorious is taking all the great adjectives, amazing, wonderful, incredible, and putting them into one word, calling, calling God glorious Father. This Father that we have who's glorious, who loves us. God's a glorious Father to you. Paul said, I keep asking the glorious Father that He may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know Him better. You know what the heart of God is through the prayer of Paul is that you know Him better. See, God moved in the heart of Paul to pray for the people in Ephesus, that they would know God as the glorious, awesome Father, the loving Father. They would understand they're dearly loved children of God. Paul talks about that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, that we're loved children of God. And God, God moved in Paul to pray that the people would understand, that they would have wisdom and understanding and revelation, that God's not an angry judge, that He's not a condemning God who's out to, to zap us when we do wrong and who's disapproving of, of, of us and angry at us, but He's a loving Father who comes close and wraps His arms around us, says, I love you, I've forgiven you. Paul says, I pray that you would know Him better, and that's my prayer for you. I pray you would know God better as your loving Father. Paul also prays, he says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened and that you may know the hope to which he has called you. See, Paul's asking that the light of the Holy Spirit would just shine on the hearts of the people in Ephesus and they, they would know the hope that's theirs in Christ. And that's my prayer for you, that you would know the hope that's yours in Christ, that you would know your life does have meaning, your life does have purpose, both now and for all eternity. You have something to live for now. You have something to look forward to in the future because Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose from the dead, and one day He's coming back. We have incredible purpose. And Paul prays that the church in Ephesus would know the purpose and the, the, the hope that they have in Christ. He prayed that they would know the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints. There's the word again, saints. He wanted them to know the riches, the wealth that's theirs in Christ. The, the, the grace that's theirs in Christ, the inheritance spiritually that's theirs, the forgiveness, the being made holy. We've talked about this over the past few days. Without st a, a stain, without spot, without wrinkle, flawless, faultless. Paul wanted them desperately to know it and experience it and enjoy those spiritual blessings and to look forward to what God has for plan, uh, plan for them in, in the coming ages and us as well. He wants you to know your inheritance, the riches of your inheritance for all the saints. He said he also prayed that they would know the incomparable or the incomparable great power for us who believe. You know what the power for us who believe is? It's the, it's the power of grace. It's the power that Jesus put it this way when Paul was speaking to him in 2 Corinthians. 
And Paul prayed that the Lord would take away the thorn. And Jesus said, said Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my, my power is made perfect in your weakness. See, the power of God in our lives is grace. I've literally seen grace change the lives of people. When people have come to understood, understand that God is a God who loves them unconditionally, that God is a God with unmerited kindness and unlimited forgiveness, that, that, that they're no longer under any condemnation or shame or guilt with God. I've literally seen within, within 30 seconds with people before, as I shared grace, the power of God literally opened their eyes up and changed their heart. God's power of grace inside of a person is absolutely incredible. And he compares the power of grace for us who believe it. It's like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. How powerful is grace? Grace is as powerful as the resurrection of Jesus Christ because grace raises dead people to life. Grace raises people who are condemned, shamed, full of guilt. They're dead. And grace comes in, forgiveness comes in, hope comes in, love comes in, and takes a dead person and brings them to life. And that's what God wants to do for you. He wants you to experience His grace. And He wants the power of His grace to come into your life. And if you're feeling dead now, if you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling shame and guilt and condemnation, the power of grace is a resurrection to you and will totally change your life. I hope you have a great day.